Welcome. Beautiful. Welcome to create a four page WordPress website number one, an interactive step by step series. All righty. So, hi, I am Sarah Snow. I'm a former teacher. I taught English. I taught creative writing. I taught journalism. Um, you will definitely hear barking uh, or whistling birds in the background of today's session. My bird may also say hello. <laughs> she has a vocabulary of about 10 words, so she's sitting right here. Um, I love green chili, learning languages. I make lots of websites and I love to hike. Um, and I'm a training team contributor slash mad scientist. So this is the start of um, what I'm hoping will be uh, a great series. And I'm hoping that eventually we can turn this into kind of a cohort model so that we can evaluate our work, get suggestions, share all of that. But we'll do our best. We'll see how this goes today. So expectations, the number one expectation always is respect yourself and everyone in this session. I was going to say this room, we were going to have breakout rooms, but uh, my co-host was unable to make it today, but that's okay. Um, do ask questions in the chat box or aloud. Many of you have already found your chat box. Find your chat box here. Not chat box, but chat box. <laughs> Autocorrect. Um, you're also welcome to answer each other's questions too. I see some people who have attended these sessions before. So you know that we always are learning together, including me, your host. We learn different things every single time we, we do this. There's just, there's so much to WordPress. It's such a powerful tool. Um, and we're going to try some new Zoom techniques today. So we're going to start with a poll. Um, it should appear on your screen. There it is. How much do you already know about WordPress? So we've got 14 people in the room, 15 if you include me. Um, so how much do you know? Uh, one is, hey, I know very little about setting up WordPress websites. Two, I have used WordPress in the past, but like not block themes. Three is, hey, I've tried to set up a block theme in the past, but like, wow, I got stuck. That was definitely me uh, when I first started <laughs> learning about this series. Um, Four is, hey, I'm somewhat comfortable setting up block themes. And five is, I am very comfortable setting up a WordPress block theme. Um, and this poll is anonymous, so don't worry about like anybody knowing it's you. <laughs> I just kind of want to see where we are today, just because that helps me figure out like how fast or how slow to go in each section. So we've got about 86 people who've participated. Let's give it just a couple more, more seconds here, and we're just going to see where we are today. Are you hearing chirping in the background? I'm just curious. My cockatiels are uh, having a big day today. <laughs> oh, they're chatting and honking. Oh, that's great. All right. If you are just joining us, oh, you can't hear them. Okay. Uh, I was going to do this outside, but my poor puppy was very, very sick this morning. So she is outside with my partner instead. Okay. Well, I hope they're not too distracting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this poll then just so we can see where people are. It looks like the majority of us are pretty new. So I'm ending this now. I'm going to share the results. You should be able to see them on this screen. All right, excellent. Okay, so those of you who are fours and fives, please do help me answer questions in the chat box. You may have different skill sets than I do. I look forward to learning from you, everybody else. We're going to get started. Um, we were going to do some breakout rooms and we were going to practice and we were going to broadcast uh, the mic and audio. But again, I just I don't have a co-host today and I want to make sure that this is a good experience uh, for everybody. So since I can't monitor both at once as of yet, uh, we'll be skipping that little section today, but that's all right. So we're going to go ahead um, and get started. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Do, do, do. There were those polls. Okay. So first off, I want to make sure I sent out an email earlier today. Um, is your WordPress website ready to go? So I'm going to launch that question just so I can see. Um, I've got several answers here. Yes, you set up local before this session. That's a way that you can set up WordPress for free. Um, or you're using Champ, MAMP, a different local environment. Or, hey, you've got a WordPress host um, already that's online. Or, hey, not yet. Like, I still need to set up a WordPress website. Um, that was what we were going to do. Let me get the link since we got a couple of people who haven't set up yet, and that's totally fine. Um, so I'm going to go to do, 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 do. We have these great instructions. They live here on my little tester website, my Adventures in WordPress Land website. Um, if you have not set up 
WordPress host yet, um, there are instructions here. It talks about how to download local um, and how to basically set up a free test blog. Um, yeah, so if you want to do that while we're watching our first video today, I was going to have a quiet breakout room, but again, I just want to make sure that everyone is, is comfortable and safe um, <laughs> in today's session. So if you want to do that during uh, this first video, it's about seven minutes long. You can definitely make a lot of progress there. Um, yeah, but the yeah, so let's see here. Uh, most people have a host or you're using Champ, MAMP, or a different local environment. Great, great, great. Okay, cool. Ah, so today is interactive. So it's an I do, we do type thing. So I'm going to show you something. We're going to start with a video. I will show you how to do something step by step. You'll do something step by step. If you get stuck, you can unmute yourself and ask a question um, and we will help you. Um, or you can ask in the chat box. But I do want to let those of you know um, if you are using something other than local by flywheel or an online host and you want to attend more than one of these sessions, like if you're planning to like really build this website over the course um, of the six to eight session series, um, please make sure you know how to take and share screenshots or uh, maybe consider switching to local. Um, there's a way that you can share your website just with the learners uh, in this box with local, or you can do that pretty easily with an online host. Um, but the idea is that it's going to be really interactive and we're going to like look at each other's websites and we're going to try and find out like, you know, what what's working, what's not, suggestions for change. And we're going to just celebrate like the cool stuff that we end up doing. So cool. All right, so I'm going to end this poll. I'm not going to share the results this time just because uh, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is just our, our prep work here. Um, so there's that. Cool. Well, that worked really well. Huzzah. I'm excited to try breakout rooms next. So first, we are going to watch a quick video choosing and installing your theme. Um, again, use that link that I sent in the chat while we watch this video. This is just some background information on themes, and then we will choose and install our own theme as well. So here we go. Welcome to Learn Word. Uh oh. To ask questions, <laughs> overview yes, other Yes, let's get to the end. Let's try this again. To I the trust you. Very will... beginning. It's a very good place to start. I'm going to make this big. I'm going to press play, and then I'm going to mute myself so that the singing birds behind me are not quite so loud. Hi, and welcome to Learn WordPress. Today's session is all about themes. Here are the learning objectives for this workshop. To differentiate between the four different types of themes, to find and evaluate themes, to install and update your theme, and lastly, to access support for your theme. Let's get going. In short, a theme is basically a website template with a certain layout and design. When you use WordPress, your content is completely separated from its presentation. This means that the look and feel of your site can change completely by just using a different theme, while your content will remain the same. There are thousands of free themes available in WordPress, but there are also premium themes available outside of the theme repository. Many free versions also offer premium themes from the developer or theme selling site. When you open a theme and click on preview, you will get an idea of what can be achieved if this theme is selected. Please note the thumbnail of a theme is an example or suggestion and won't look the same when the theme is installed. WordPress and its themes have evolved over time. The Gutenberg block editor introduced the use of blocks to compose posts and pages. With full site editing, the experience and extendability of blocks is now available to all parts of your site. Within full site editing are a collection of features and classic themes can opt in to use some of them. There are four types of themes to take note of. Block themes, classic themes, hybrid themes, and universal themes. It might be helpful to mention that block themes and classic themes are most commonly used. A block theme is a theme that uses blocks for all parts of a site, including navigation menus, headers, content, and footers. These themes allow you to edit and customize all parts of your site. And something important to take note of, the site editor is used to manage theme settings instead of the customizer. Let's look at an example of a block theme. And remember, these themes are newer and were made for full site editing. 
Make your way to Appearance and click on Themes. I have activated a block-based theme called 2022 and in the sidebar settings you will notice you have access to the editor. Everything from menus, widgets and everything in the customizer are all integrated into the site editor. In the site editor you can edit the header and footer template parts directly. You can set up templates and also change the site-wide styles of your site. A classic theme does not use the block editor to manage the site layout beyond posts and pages. These use the customizer, menus and widgets to make changes to theme settings. And since classic themes have been around the longest, there are many more to choose from. Let's take a closer look at an example of a classic theme. When we make our way to appearance and click on themes, you will notice I've activated the 2016 theme. And in the sidebar settings, you will have access to the customizer and more. And when you open the customizer, you will be able to change all your theme settings from here. A hybrid theme is a classic theme that adopts some features of full site editing, like the template editor. A hybrid theme such as Excel still uses the customizer to make changes while also being able to create your own custom templates. So let's make our way to posts to see this in action. Open one of your posts and go to the sidebar settings on the right and here you will be able to create a new template and assign it to which page or post you wish to. So hybrid themes have access to the customizer and the template editor. And lastly, a universal theme is a theme that can be configured completely either way, as a block theme or classic theme. In this example, I've installed the universal theme Emulsion, and as you will notice, you have access to the customizer as well as the editor. To find more themes, make your way to WordPress.org and click on Themes. The WordPress theme directory is the official site to search. You can easily find the right one for your site with advanced search features. Click on Feature Filter and here you can use filters for layout, subject and specific theme features. This includes finding block themes that support full site editing. As you search through the different themes available, you can click on More Info to find out more about the specific theme. And then scroll down so that you can see when it was last updated as well as the ratings. Version updates, active installations and ratings can give a good sense of the overall experience others have had with this theme. To install a new theme, make your way to Appearance, click on Themes and select Add New. Once you find the theme you are looking for, click on install. And once installed, don't forget to click on activate. If you have a theme in the form of a zip file, you can install it manually. Click on add new. And then at the top, select upload theme. And then you can upload it from your computer. If there are updates available, you will be notified in the top menu bar as well as the dashboard menu. You can navigate to the updates page and scroll down. And here you will find a single theme or a list of themes that have updates available. And from this page, you can choose to update individual themes or all at once. And remember to back up your website before making any updates or consider using a child theme. Another option is to make your way to Appearance, click on Themes and go to the theme that needs to be updated and at the top you will have the option to select Update Now or click on Theme Details and at the top you will also be able to update and lastly you also have the option to enable auto updates for this specific theme. To delete a theme, select the relevant theme and at the bottom right, you will have the option to delete. 
To get support, make your way to the theme directory, select the relevant theme, and scroll down to support. The best way to get help with a the theme is by going to the themes related support forum to ask questions or view other tickets. I trust you will find the right theme that meets all your needs. Visit Learn WordPress for more workshops and training material. All right, and now we are going to choose and activate a theme. So we're going to start by heading to your WordPress dashboard. So I am going to completely redesign um, a blog of mine that is currently um, on WordPress.com. I think I want to switch uh, to a different host uh, just because I like to I like to play and see like all the different ways it, it makes me a better teacher. So I'm going to be redesigning my birdie blog. This is what it looks like right now. It's not particularly pretty. But you want to head to your dashboard. So that's what I am going to do first. And we're going to head over to Appearance and Themes, then select Add New. Now you'll notice this is a little different, right? So the editor no longer has the beta button next to it because it is no longer in beta. Ha ha. WordPress changes all the time. There is also this button here. So you can select that. And now there are 301 themes uh, that you can choose from. So yeah, we're, we're going to just do that now. You should be able to head to WordPress dashboard, head to appearance, themes, add new, and make sure that you have this block theme selected. So I'm going to I'm going to mute for just a minute and I'm going to go through and I'm going to thoughtfully choose a theme. Normally what I do is I'm like, hey, use the 2023 theme. That's the most recent one uh, created by the, the general community. Um, but I want you to pick your own theme today. Um, and the reason for that is because, I, I mean, there are so many different options. So some themes offer more styles, they offer variations on colors, they offer block patterns. So you really just want to find one that that sticks or that really resonates with you today. So I'm going to do this for my bird blog. Um, and that way we can definitely work on this together. Um, but just know that we're going to be looking at slightly different screens and that that's okay. We're, we're here to help each other today. Um, let's just take a few minutes, pick a theme, install it and activate it. And you're going to see me do this on my screen and I hope that you do the same as well. Give you about two minutes. You're just joining us. We are selecting a theme right now in our WordPress installation. For me personally, I'm looking for kind of more of a blog theme, maybe something like this. That's really pretty. <laughs> I love things that are really graphic heavy. Other people may be just making a, a standard website. There's no wrong way to do this right now. And of course, you can always switch themes later.
you may notice if you're previewing certain themes that they don't necessarily look the way that they do um, right in here. That's just because we don't have anything on our on our site yet. Um, that's normal and that's okay. Oh, interesting. I actually really like this one. Oh, but that's I'm gonna stick with the one that I picked for right now because I know I can always change it later. Let's do about 15 more seconds, install a theme and activate it. When you're ready, write ready in the chat box. Lisa just asked a really good question. She asked, is it better to add content first and pick a theme after? Um, that is one way that you can do that. Um, and if that is, is your cup of tea, you can definitely join us um, I think it's session three or four. Um, but uh, for me, I'm a very visual person and I find that a lot of people like to design their themes first um, before they, they start adding content. Um, so th that's one of the beautiful things about WordPress is that there's no wrong way um, to do this. So if I wanted to, I could start making pages and writing posts first, um, but this series, we're going to design our theme first. And that's part of the reason why we're separating this into um, bigger or like a longer series here is just because it can take some time to really uh, get where you're going here, um, just because there is some experimentation. Oh, I also like the smart cube one. Interesting. You know what? I'm going to install this one and activate it instead. It'll help me illustrate like what sticks and what doesn't. Okay. Now I'm ready. Let me know. I've seen two people who have picked a theme. And if you are overwhelmed, you've gotten to the bottom of this and you are just not sure where to start, I always recommend the 2023 theme. It's a really good theme uh, to learn on. Lisa just shared a really great opinion. If you're working in local just to learn about like how to customize a theme, it may be helpful to have a few pages and posts to see how that content will look. I completely agree with you. Um, and when we get to the part where we're actually like structuring our website, like where all the different elements appear rather than just colors and text, that is absolutely something that we will do. Great comment, Lisa. All right. <laughs> Jean says that there are too many choices. I'm going to go with 2023. That's totally fine. And I may switch back and forth. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure what I want to use. It's a little bit of a thing. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. Pick a theme and activate it. You can always take some time to explore different themes later and, and do the same process. Um, the process we're using today will work on any theme. So Elena asked, I'm curious about your opinion about the like a paid Divi theme, um, which is a page builder. It's super famous. It's really popular. Um, it's really powerful. So in addition to WordPress core, which is what we're working with today, there's no additional plugins, just themes um, that come with WordPress standard. There are additional page builders out there that can offer additional options and allow you to do different things. So um, I don't have any experience with Divi. I've definitely used like Baker Press before and a long time ago, I think I used a, a page builder called Beaver Builder, um, but it just kind of depends on what your goals are. And I think that um, if you just want a simple like four page website to start, um, you probably don't need necessarily a page builder like that, but you are always welcome to switch. It's one of the beautiful things about WordPress is that you can always try different things. Um, Lisa says that 2023 is a good theme to learn on to use for live sites. 
You've used it as a starter for several websites with success. Yeah, and that that is one other thing is that if you're just using WordPress core, um, and this this may not be true for everything, so or every single page builder, but I have found that certain page builders um, have slowed down my website. And if your website slows down, you have a lot of people who will you know log onto your page, uh, and if it doesn't load within two seconds, like something like sixty percent leave for a different website. So it's just something to consider. All right, once we're here, we are going to click on editor here. If you see customizer, you have probably installed a classic theme. We really, really, really want to make sure we're using a block theme because we want to be able to edit all of our site's look and feel. So now we're going to click into our editor. I'm going to make sure that following my stuff. So now we're going to make it pretty. So we're not going to focus on the structure of our site, um, but we're going to use something known as the style book. So you're going to be looking at something that looks a little bit like this. So you can see I've got this page over here. Um, it's pretty, I, I like the blue, I like the white, but it's pretty simple. Like I want to, I want to stylize it to my own preferences here. And we're going to do something known as using the style book. So we're going to watch a quick video here. And you're going to learn how you can style any block theme, whether you stick with your first one or move on to another one um, really quickly, um, even without any content uh, on your website yet. So, um, yeah, this is all about the look and feel. So don't worry too much about like if you want your logo on the right side or the left side or if you want your social media icons to be somewhere else like that's going to be a later session today is just about our color palette and our fonts because that's, you know, the beginning of your brand, how people recognize you, how they trust you, what resonates with them. So here we go. I'm going to make this. Size. One of WordPress 6.2's most exciting new features is called the style book. This style book creates a visual representation of all the styles that will automatically be applied across your website, saving you time and letting you design and actually see the changes you make all from one dashboard. From colors to fonts to button sizes, this preview gives you a strong idea from the start of a website about what your new block theme will look like. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to use the WordPress Stylebook to customize your block theme. Let's find out how. Imagine you are creating a new website using the Block Theme 2023. To find its Stylebook, from your dashboard, hover your mouse over the Appearance Navigation link in the left-hand sidebar and select Editor. Then, click on the Site Editor to the right. Click the Styles icon in the top right-hand corner. Then, select the eye icon that appears. This is your block theme's personal style book. From here, you can see how the stylistic changes you make will affect the appearance of your website. Depending on your block theme's options, you can make sweeping changes to your fonts change your background color, and, in some themes, change your layout options. This WordPress stylebook provides five tabs. Text, Media, Design, Widgets, and Theme, so that you can quickly see the changes you make take effect, all without having any content on your site, yet. Any future content I write, or any existing content on my website that uses these styles, will have the style applied to it. The style book also allows me to add individual styles onto specific blocks. For example, say I am a writer and will often use the quote block on this website. I would like to customize just this one block because I would always like my quotes to use a certain font and stand out from the rest of the text. I navigate to the quote block by clicking it on my screen. 
This takes me to the quote block. From here, I can make changes to the font that only affect this quote block. I select a font that I'd like to use for my future or existing quotes. Then I make it a little larger so that it will stand out. Finally, I make it italic. Now, my quote block will always stand out the way that I've just styled it, even if I make sweeping changes to the rest of the text on my website. Here's a pro tip. To avoid a theme design headache in the future, I recommend that you stylize individual blocks sparingly. It's important to note that if you make individual changes, block by block, changes that you intend to make globally to the rest of your website will not affect this particular block. Notice how I changed the font globally under General Styles Text. Did you notice that the quote block I just styled did not change? Let's say you find and install a cool new font that you'd like to use everywhere on your website. If you styled every single text block individually, when you make what you hope will be a big change site-wide to all the text, your individually styled text blocks will not change. You'll need to style them again. To reset a single block style back to the defaults, I can head back to the block's individual style settings either by clicking on it again or by navigating to it in the Styles panel on the right by clicking Blocks, then searching for Quote. If I reset this block to the default font, that tells WordPress to use the font that I set in the site-wide global styles you see when you first enter this global styles icon. Now, that will allow me to style my website's fonts, quotes and all, in one place. The changes I will make globally to my text, site-wide, rather than just in this individual quote block, mean that if I change my font, it will now also apply to this individual block. With thoughtful design, I can get started working on my new website from scratch, or I can give my existing content a brand new look with a few clicks of a button. The style book also allows me to double check my website for accessibility. For example, I notice that the calendar widget on this theme is not accessible with the color scheme that I picked. The contrast is not high enough. So, for this specific instance, I customize this block to my liking, and now anyone who requires a strong color contrast will be able to read this calendar. Now, you know how to use the WordPress Stylebook with your block theme. All right, so we should all now be in our editor here. To get started styling, you're going to go ahead and click into this just over on the right, and you'll be greeted with a, a get started uh, button if this is the first time that you're here. Um, and so to find the style book, and I, I know it can be really tempting to just start like making changes right here. We're going to do that at a later point. Um, but for any theme that you want to style, you're going to head over here to your styles. So these allow you to um, design in one spot um, and be able to um, so that way, any any future writing that you do on a post or a page, any work that you do on the structure of your website will automatically be applied. So our style book can be found here. But before we head that way, your theme may have something known as styles. Um, if you click on browse styles, and not all themes have this, but this one does, that was lucky. Um, it allows you to pick certain theme color choices that maybe will get you closer to your overall look and feel of what you want it to look like. Um, so this is just one of those things. Some block themes have them, other themes do not. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna start with, I really like teal. I'm not sure it's as professional as I need it to be, but that's okay. Like for what I have in my mind. So I'm, I'm going to pick one here um, in my styles and you're welcome to do that. But our goal of today's session here is really in this style book. So you're going to click this eye and you're going to be able to see a lot of what this looks like. So you can see all of my text here, my media, all of this stuff. Um, it's really important if you do select a style to check your media specifically. Some of the um, styles that you see in, where was it? Some of the styles that you see here may put some overlays onto your pictures. So like if I select purple, for example, 
um, and I click on media, it, you might see some purple overlays. So that's something that, that can happen. Um, yeah, so from here, um, I highly recommend just starting uh, in your style book. And I'm going to go through the steps one more time, just in case, because I, I know we've moved kind of fast here. But I want you to just start playing with your colors. Um, what do you want your overall background color to be? Do you want it to be, you know, a dark one with, you know, maybe some light text? Do you want to adjust the size um, of your text over here? Like there, there's a lot that you can do and a lot that you can explore here. So I highly recommend um, doing that. Um, but yeah, so just to to review where we were, and again, go ahead and just start playing with this. Start to get a feel um, for what your, your theme can do. Um, but as somebody asked earlier, uh, I think it was Lisa was like, hey, is what I'm doing here, if I switch, um, if I switch to a different theme, is, is this going to transfer over? And the short answer to that is no, not right now. Um, there are like, we'll, we'll get into the specifics of what changes and what doesn't. But right now we're just styling our theme for the look and feel. And the goal of our session is to get all of this looking just the way that we would like. Um, and Jean, we will absolutely get to installing a font. So let me, let me get back here. Um, and I will post the recording of this class um, on wordpress.tv at the link that I shared initially. Um, I will also see if I can post it in Meetup as well, but we'll, we'll go through that as well. So let me show you. So I, I styled this so that there's this, it's really this really pretty purple color. Let me switch themes to show you kind of how this changes. So if you're following along, you're a little bit behind, you're gonna head to your appearance themes. You added a new block theme of your choice and installed and activated it. And once you have a theme that you like, so I'm going to switch over here to activate this. So now I've activated a new theme. You're going to select the editor button. So as you can see, the choices that I made, that did not switch themes. Um, and it, it looks like it added some additional content as well, which is, is fine, and I'm going to work with it. Um, but once you're in this editor, click Styles, and you'll notice I don't have the ability to select a, a different style here, so I'm going to have to do this block by block depending on what I would like. Um, and then you're going to click this eye icon here, and you're just going to work on the overall look and feel of your website. So Lisa asked, hey, I was surprised that the color of the social media icons didn't seem to change to the purple color. Um, as you're playing with yours, if you're curious about that answer, I'm going to show that now. Otherwise, keep playing with your style book. I'm going to head back to my other theme. And what you'll notice here is that the colors that I selected before, if I go into editor. Oh, the did I not save? I don't think I saved. Make sure that you save. <laughs> Let's... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to work on this really quick. I'm going to pick a different style here. So Lisa's asking, "Hey, like why why are these social media icons not changing?" Um because it looks like they should, right? So let's actually take a peek at that. Let's see what we can find. So this is some working in the header here. Okay. So my first thought was maybe they were using images rather than site icons here. But I think what's actually happening is in the design itself. So I'm going to see if I can find where those social media icons are. I'm not sure if it's in here or not. I'm going to double check. Hmm. My social icons are there. I'm going to click on it and see what I can do with this. So I can change a color here. Let's let's select a color here. Oh, those aren't changing. Fascinating. I'm not actually sure why that is. Let's stick around at the end and we'll see if we can we can figure it out. This could be that in the settings, because there's there's multiple ways to do things, and we're trying to walk you through the most straight through like straightforward way to do this. Um, it could be that there is something in the settings that has been selected here, and we'll we'll get to more of this advanced stuff soon. But I'm wondering if oh, it didn't change. Interesting. I wonder if we found a bug. We learn different things every time. 
So Pam, you're saying your social media icons um, are not changing either, eh? Fascinating. Okay, so because these icon colors should be like that. Let me save this really quick. I'm going to look at it from the front end. Just going to look at what it looks like. No, those are not changing, but it is changing on hover. Interesting. I wonder if there's something hard coded into this theme. Having the same issue with changing the colors text. Interesting. What theme? Um. Huh. Okay. I'm going to click my edit site button. This is another way to get into this. Um, Pamela, what do you do? You know the name of the theme that you chose? I'd like to take a peek at that. See, this is where I need breakout rooms. Oh, I would love to troubleshoot this. <laughs> Just curious. So to find the theme name, it's appearance and themes. And I will have a co-host co going forward. So those people who are, you know, going through the instructions. And um, and by the way, thank you so much, Steve, for uh, writing down those instructions. I will make sure that I have that for next time as well. Blockland FSC. Let's let's see what that looks like. Blockland FSC. Let's try this one. Nope. Okay, I'm going to install this and we're going to see if we can see what's going on here. Thank you for your patience. Um, I'm, we're going to explore this for about four minutes and then we're going to move on to uh, some fonts um, just for the, for the sake of time. And then I think I may add some like troubleshooting, like an actual, a block of troubleshooting time as well in our next session as well. So I'm gonna edit this. All right, so now I'm heading to my editor. I think this is the one that Pamela was using. Let's take a peek. So you're saying that the text color is not changing. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. Hmm. Okay, let me actually look at this in the style book and make sure that it's working in the style book. So it looks like the headings are changing. The text isn't, I wonder. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to troubleshoot where this is coming from. So what I think has happened here is that the theme author who created this theme may have individually styled this theme. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna click on it here. So you can see that this is headings. Those were not changing. Um, I'm gonna click on colors here. Oh, that's not there either. Why is that not changing? So you can definitely change the colors there block by block, but you can also press this clear button. Okay, so let me actually look at the paragraph. So one thing that is really important to know is that some individual theme blocks affect other theme blocks. So my, my suspicion is that the theme author said, hey, I want the text color to always be black. And there it is. So <laughs> that is why those colors aren't changing to clear it. Um, you should be able to select it and there should be a clear button. Where's that clear button? Okay. So I think what we're learning together today is that certain, um, and you'll notice that other blocks are changing as well. So as I change this from black to red, the paragraph text was changing, so was the quote, but other ones are not. So you may have to click through block by block to find that out. And it looks like the theme default automatically has that. So for some of these in certain block themes, depending on the way that the theme author created it, you may have to go block, block by block to do that. Um, if you are an advanced user, uh, it's probably set in the theme.json file. So that's some coding um, that you that you could use to, to either turn that option off or on. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. The, the biggest thing is that um, block themes allow you to dig into them and figure out like, hey, where are things changing? Where are they not? So that was a really good question. Um, so that tells me that in my last theme, the social media icons may have been used in a different block. So sometimes you may have to click block by block and check out the colors there to see that. 
These are sometimes known as bugs. They are sometimes known as uh, features. Just kind of depends on what the theme author intended. Um, but now we've learned a little bit. Um, cool. All right. I'm really glad that we we looked through that. And the more that you play with this and the more that you explore and the more you explore with us together, um, the more we will we will discover things like that. So again, next time we will have breakout rooms um, specifically to, to, to troubleshoot some issues like that. Thank you for that question. Um, but let's move on to some fonts. So you may be in your theme right now. And maybe you are in your typography section. And if you click font, you might notice, okay, my font or my themes come with some predefined fonts here. So this one comes with four different fonts. Again, we're probably going to have to change the individual paragraph text. I think this was set by the theme author. Um, that's why that's not changing, but other ones are, right? If we want to, we probably want to have different themes. Now, you may have dozens of fonts here. You may only have one or two, um, and that depends on both your theme uh, and the actual style itself. So if I head back out of here, I click on my styles button. Is there? No, there isn't one in this one. The the button I, I have here, the like browse styles button, sometimes the fonts change based on that. So that's just something to know. But there is a very quick way that you can manage your own theme fonts. Um, this is another thing that will not transfer theme to theme. So just keep that in mind. This is practice today, like really getting that style book to look a certain way. Um, uh, does take time and that's part of why we've broken this up into multiple sessions here. So let's go manage our themes. So one way that you can do this uh, is by going and we're going to install our first plugin today. Um, so plugins are an advanced feature. Um, do know that you don't want to just start installing plugins right away. Like it could be really tempting, but some not all plugins play well together. We're going to install a plugin that I know works really well. And it is created by the general wordpress.org community. And that plugin is create lock theme. And I'm going to write these instructions in the chat uh, so that you can follow along as well. So you'll notice this is by wordpress.org. This is created by the community. Um, you're going to install it. And you're going to activate it once it's done. So one, managing fonts. One, go to plugins, two, click add new, three, search for create block theme, four, install the theme, it's the plugin, not the theme, and five, activate that plugin. So this does more than just um, install fonts. That's okay. <laughs> um, this just allows us to literally install plugin or not plugins fonts directly to our chosen theme, and that's a really good feature because um, there are other plugins that are just font specific. They allow you to select from sometimes dozens, sometimes hundreds um, of different themes, but they can't like having lots and lots of different. Uh, fonts can actually slow down your website so it's a best practice to just have. Um, probably one or two. And we're going to talk about some best practices here as we wrap up. But you'll notice now if I hover over appearance, I now have a magical button that says manage theme fonts. So you can see here that these are the themes that are not the themes. These are the fonts that exist in my theme right now. If you don't like them, you're like, ah, I don't want them. I don't want to see them ever again. You can remove them entirely. Um, but then you have these two options up here. And that is add Google font and add a local font. So I'm going to give everybody a moment here to get to your theme fonts. And remember, this isn't going to necessarily transfer. This is just practice. Today, you're going to do the styling um, on your own time in between these sessions as you get your, your style book to look just the way you'd like. Um, but Jean was asking, how do I add a local font? She had one that she found that was really accessible, really, really good, um, probably for you know, someone who maybe has low vision, someone who has dyslexia. Um, so you can do that by adding a local font here. You would download it to your computer and you would choose the file, upload it, and there it would be. <laughs> and we'll talk about how to do that in a second. So this is the more advanced version. Today, we're going to stick with just Google fonts today. 
So I'm gonna click on manage theme fonts and you're gonna add a Google font, okay? So six, add, seven, add Google font. I've added the instruction into the chat box. So with Google Fonts, if you use other plugins, um, sometimes what they do is they link out to the Google Font and they pull them um, from an outside source um, rather than installing them directly into your theme. Using this button installs it directly into your theme. Um, and that's a good thing just because um, it, there's uh, some data privacy issues that are especially important, um, which is why we're doing it this way. Um, you know that this is a, a safe way to do this in a way that keeps everything contained to your theme. Looks like Jean installed a local font. Excellent. And I have a resource for you at the end. Once you're here and you've clicked add Google font, please type ready so that I know where you are. You can also give me a thumbs up or just a Y for yes, whatever works for you. I think the other thing I would like you to do is actually go to the Google Fonts dashboard. Um, I wasn't actually sure what this was, was going to look like in here. Um, so you'll notice here you've got a big list. And these are all the fonts that are available for you to install on Google. And that can be kind of a long way to uh, to try and think, to try and find things, right? Because like you can see it um, up here, but that's not really a great way to browse. So instead, I recommend you go to fonts.google.com. And I'm going to make this bigger. Holy cow, that's small. There we go. Now you should be able to see some stuff. So my recommendation here is you are going to want to choose two fonts. Um, you can use more, but for consistency's sake, I usually recommend you use one font for general text, so like long bits of text, so paragraphs, quotes, you know, stuff people will read <laughs> for a while. And then I think you want a second font for headings, logos, um, like short bits of text. And the reason that we're, we're here and we're looking at this Google font is because it's going to allow us to, to type something, right? So um, I'm going to write birds of a feather flock together. This allows you to kind of get your content in your mind here. Um, and it also allows you to search fonts in a very visual way. So to pick your main font, the font that your paragraphs are written in, um, it's generally recommended that you use specifically either serif or sans serif fonts. So I'm going to unselect the rest of these and we'll talk about them in a minute. So these are generally more readable right off the bat. Um, and the difference between them, um, so serif fonts uh, are generally a little bit more stylistic. So if you look at these fonts, you'll notice that like they've got little tails on them. Um, they're a little bit, uh, I don't know, they're a little bit more textbooky. <laughs> um, and you can scroll down and, and find them that way. Um, Serif fonts tend to be better for an audience that is a little bit more advanced. So if you have like a science-based medical um, type audience, um, you're writing a textbook, serifs are great. Meanwhile, sans serif tend to have more of a clean look. Um, you'll notice that it's missing a lot of the embellishments on them. These tend to be better for a younger audience. Um, for example, like elementary school students, just because it's, it's a little bit easier um, to, to their very nice clean lines. So you're going to want to go through these um, and you're going to find ones that that work uh, for your brand um, and just pick ones that resonate with you. Um, you can always install and remove more later, but yeah, you're going to go through here and this allows you to visualize it. Now you can download it from here or um, I'm going to pick this uh, a Remo one. I can head back to my dashboard here and I can type in a Remo. And now that's the font that I picked. Uh, you're gonna if you want different styles of um and then just click add Google fonts to your theme. Okay. 
And now that theme font has been added. Okay. And you'll be able to find this now if you head back to your editor. You click through to your style book, typography. Let's do our text. As you can see, now I've got a Remo and my, some of my text is changing. So let's very quickly, as we wrap up here, let's talk about the other, um, the other types, right? So you also have other types of fonts. So you've got display fonts, handwriting, and monospace. These are more stylistic. Can you imagine trying to read an entire <laughs> page paragraph after paragraph of something like this would be kind of like reading your you know your sister's diary or something um so these are better for embellishments so short headings you can use them in logos you install them um the same way so yeah um that those are kind of the the best practices uh for today um as far as homework goes if you want to go through this slower you you want to revisit this you want to um look at this a slightly different way um, I will get you that in just a second, but let's, let's talk really quickly about your homework. Okay. Cause I did say there would be a little bit, um, you want to start, uh, finish styling your site. So your colors, your font, your style book specifically, you want to avoid making too many changes to your overall structure. Um, because next week we're going to do headers and footers, and then we're going to start working on, um, individual templates. So what we've basically done today is uh, there is a course that is in the making. This is a beta version, so there may still be some typos here. But if you want to go through this slowly, like you don't like video learning as much, um, you are welcome to join uh, this course here. What we basically did today was we selected and activated a block theme. Um, there's the, the site editor and the page editor. That'll definitely prep you for next time. And you styled your site globally. So we did... Uh, basically these two things here. Um, the other optional thing you can do as you start working on your website is you can plan your website's content. So this is a brainstorming type page that helps helps you really think about content, like what your messaging is, what your calls to actions are, all of that. So if you would like, I highly recommend checking out this course. Again, it's not entirely done yet, but you are definitely welcome to utilize it. Um, and we'll probably see you next time. Uh, one final question, Gina asked, in the style book, how do you set the size for different headings? Great question. So I am going to head to this here. So if you're just in your general style book, I'm getting back there by clicking on styles. I'm clicking this eye icon. And if I click on typography and click on headings, um, you should be able to see uh, several options here. So you can say, hey, I want all of my headings to be a little bit bigger. Actually, I want the default. You can select um, different things here. You can also do them independently here. Um, you will have different options depending on your theme, but I can say, hey, I want all of my H1 headings. These are my post titles, my page titles. Um, you can select different things there and you can see that H1 up there is changing. So that is one way that you can do that. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend like your, your main homework today um, for next time is to really just get the style book looking the way that you would like. And then we're going to start working on our headers and footers. And after that, we'll start planning our content. All right. Oof, that was a lot today. Ah, This is why we've broken it up. I really hope that today went well for you. Is there anything that you need from me before we log off today? Oh, last thing. So if you would like to join me again to style your headers and your footers, um, you are welcome to do that. <laughs> Looks like somebody else is doing it at 4 p.m. as well. Fascinating. Cool. Um, so you have two time options. Uh, the, the other one will not be interactive, I don't think. But if you like the style today, I'm announcing this now. It should be in your email. But you are also welcome to do this. And as long as I have a co-host, we will have breakout sessions and that way we can work on things that are uh, of interest to us as well. So thank you so much for your time today. We will see you next time. And if you want to, well, let me, let me pause this now and I'll show you how to find this at the end. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to pause the recording and then show you how to find this recording in just a minute. Okay. Stop recording.